All right, now, where were we? That's right, we were about to enter the underground. Secret passageways. Hidden pathways. Where certainly some form of trap is awaiting us. First, we're going to have to get past Jumper, was it? Yeah, well, hi, Jumper. You're doing okay. Sorry I had to take out your friends, but they were kind of trying to bite me. Not like you. You were just, you know, playing with us. Just, you know, giving us some good exercise. So, that's why we're keeping you around. Don't worry, I'm sure Umbrella will take care of our trigger finger and supply you with more friends. Because that's what they do. They, uh... Oh, okay, well you guys are still around, so I spoke too soon. So if you guys could just figure out how to work that elevator, you could all reunite and just have a gay old time. Without my presence, preferably. Because the dead and the undead don't really... It doesn't really work out, you know. Not really meant to mingle. Somebody always ends up hurt. You know, and we might be drawn to each other, but it just, it never works out in the long run. You know, hurting the ones you're with is not cool. And it doesn't justify love. But I don't think love has anything to do with this. Okay, so we're in the catacombs, the underground area. For some reason, there's a typewriter there. You probably don't want to save here because... You don't even have an item box, and bad things can happen. But then again, considering what's about to happen, this probably wouldn't be a terrible place to save, but I'm not going to do it. This is a no-save zone right here. We're not operating under any false illusions of safety or security. We know we're not safe, so we're not even going to play it. We're just going to go in, gung-ho, no holes barred, guns drawn, flamethrowers blazing. We have a flamethrower, people. Are you excited? Please be excited. Well, you don't have to be excited. I'm going to be excited because Chris finally gets a fun toy. But of course, being Chris, he can't have too much fun. So, yeah. Ammo for this? Yeah. You'll see. We'll leave it at that. So, I'm going to pick up a couple of things here. Shotgun shells is always welcome as well as a first aid spray. Haven't used one of these yet, so I think I'm doing pretty good for end game when we get there. Still got some herbs too, so. Now you don't have to pick this stuff up just now, just yet, but I recommend doing this first thing because something's gonna happen and it's gonna make going back to get those a little bit trickier. So I've got a funny feeling about that door. Jump cut, just to save some time because I'm pretty sure that's going to lead to something. So I just wanted to backtrack and take care of a couple things. Item management. As you can see, I have the combat knife. You'll see why soon enough. Now you can't leave with the flamethrower. You can only use it within a certain area. So don't try to save it or hoard it because you can't just use it up. That's what it's there for. It's just a little short term quick use item something to spice things up so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get it hot and spicy and man my stomach is rumbling I hope the mic isn't picking that up I guess it's time for me to eat something and we're going to enter this door that I avoided hoping that nothing terrible comes out of the shadows to rip us asunder Enrico don't come any closer, Chris. Wait, what happened? Double crosser! What are you talking oh. about? Oh, Chris, really? That's how you defend yourself from a gunshot? Umbrella. Thank goodness he was aiming for the umbrella and not you. Who is it? I is someone there? <laughs> Double crosser? What did he mean by that? Couldn't possibly mean that, you know, somebody betrayed you. Because that's not what Double Crosser means. And apparently he was hurt, which is why he was just kind of laying in the corner there. He and he's holding a handgun clip, which we don't even want. Yeah, I don't know about Chris, man. He's he's a nice guy, but not all there. 
And everybody, let me introduce you to the new Saturn exclusive hunters. A little bit crazier, a little bit creepier. But that's about it. They might be able to poison you, I can't remember. I know they've got bloody claws, which is uh, mildly intimidating, but they're not too bad. In fact, we're going to tease him a little bit just because we can. Just show off his model a little bit too there. Can you get me? Can you get me? You can't get me. But yeah, come on, Chris. Get it together, man. Someone's about to shoot you. You put your hand over the face like, please, please. Not the cheeks. Anything but the cheeks. And somebody shoots your comrade and you just say, is anyone there? Obviously someone's there. Obviously they're not your friend. Obviously you should be chasing them down. Well... I don't know, that could be stupid because you can get shot, but do something, man. Oh, man. For a G.I. Joe, you're very passive, man. I'm going to have to work on that. Anyway, let me stop criticizing Chris. And move on with my life. Oh, by avoiding you. It's the best way to prolong my existence. Haha. <laughs> And I just did this to reset his location, hopefully. Hoping that when I open this door again, he won't be right on the other end. Because I can very much see that being a possibility. So, you know, they're pretty much like the other hunters. They might be able to poison you, I can't remember. If I can help it, they won't get a chance to. They have a different cry, a different shriek, if you will. I don't think they do more damage, though, thankfully. Still got that jump attack. And I didn't want to do this, but unfortunately you have to put the flamethrower down in order to get out of here and unlock the door. And as you can see, it's already completely used up. And they're pretty weak to fire, so it was effective, but yeah, it's not that great, not that hot. And yeah, we don't want to equip the knife. <laughs> we want to equip that. Now we're going to check this crank out, because we already had a crank, but look, this one is hexagonal. The other crank, if I'd bothered to check, it was square shaped. So, yeah, you know, I don't know why they felt compelled to give us two different cranks in one game, but yeah, Capcom, who am I to question? I'm going to use that crank, by the way. And this is quite an intricate puzzle here, isn't it? And I'd like to know who took the time to design this and set this up underground at that <laughs> unnecessarily elaborate if you ask me but hey you know people with too much money having too much fun that's what it comes down to I think there's probably somebody out there with billions of dollars just setting up all these traps and obstacles booby traps for people to fall into I mean, wouldn't you if you had all this money? No, no, you wouldn't. Hopefully, because <laughs> who would? That's that's kind of demented, isn't it? I like a practical joke as much as the next person, but this is taking it too far. And because I love you, I will not make any Indiana Jones jokes here because I don't know any good ones first off. So that always helps. And that was actually a lot easier to avoid than it looks like. I think the first time I played this game, that actually managed to kill me. But, you know, again, this was back when this first came out. And, you know, things happen. Tank controls. Or I don't know if it killed me. Maybe it was killing whoever I was watching playing, whether it was my cousin or my brother. Because, again, they, they played before I did. So I was kind of just watching them. And it made things much easier for me because I had an idea going in what I had to expect what I could look forward to having to deal with and that music's not a good sign what are we dealing with here oh the world's biggest spider yeah and again fire's really effective but it moves around very quickly so you have to kind of realign yourself quickly because this spider is very strong it can kill you in three hits even at full health so, I'm probably on danger right now, actually. And I tell you, if spiders were this large in real life, I probably would not go outside. But thankfully, it is done. Charbroiled. 
and ready to serve up but we're just gonna leave it there and get out of here as soon as possible this is why I brought the knife if you saw that little uh, shimmering in the background the corner that was a combat knife they actually were nice enough to put one here if you didn't bring it with you because why would you but we came prepared because baby spiders will pop out of that spider and we don't want to be bothered they're not that dangerous but they can hurt you and considering my health is probably low at this point yeah I'm trying not to go out like that and this is where we should have started off right save room save zone but we had to work to get here blue herb we obviously want to use that and I don't think poison actually oh fine really okay yeah I was griping over nothing so in this game I don't think poison actually depletes your health over time like in a lot of situations what it does is it obscures your health so you can't actually see how you're doing so are you fine are you a caution danger you can't tell because you're poisoned so that's what makes it a nuisance and that's why you don't want it and we're gonna keep that flamethrower only because I have to deposit it in order to get out of here same as before and I probably won't use it but yeah I'll take the ink reapers drop them off and be back in a bit okay just again more item management didn't need to see that so let's see what's behind door number two. Oh, first off because I can't take you with me so as you can see we've got snakes in the cave here I don't know what would be worse snakes on a plane or snakes in a cave because if you're in a cave you've already got troubles you know but I think I'll deal with snakes in a cave personally and okay that looks like where I need to go so we will come back to that first what's over here another boulder okay and another opportunity to use the crank so I guess that's what we're gonna do but first I think I need to take care of something that I didn't take care of or you know what no I can do that later let's go ahead and get this out the way again it's a hex and we have a hex so let's hex let's talk about hex <laughs> sorry bad one terrible awful I should ooh, I should feel I should feel terrible right now but I don't let's talk about hex baby and let's talk about you and me who sang that song anyway most songs that came out before 1990 that I've heard I couldn't tell you who sang them rock R&B it doesn't matter what type of music it is country I've probably heard it couldn't tell you who did it and no I don't think that's gonna work I think we have to do this one more time because again third time is the charm that's what we were told growing up and in a lot of instances in life yet yeah, it, it holds up something about that number three it's uh yeah yeah it gets it done and huh, what are we gonna find behind here any ideas any clues any bets I'm guessing something we need to progress the story All right, statue puzzle. We're quite familiar with those by now. And man, we're getting a lot of use out of this crank, aren't we? Which I guess is kind of a nice change of pace. You know, you're used to getting items that it's a one-time use and it's just sitting in your inventory, just collecting dust, you know, lamenting its existence and its lack of use. Because things like to be used, I like to think. You know, it's good to have a purpose in life, even if you're an inanimate object. So, I'm glad we're getting maximum mileage out of this one. Okay, so pretty straightforward. We see what we need to do here. Just kind of testing it out a moment there. Again, placement is a thing. Perspective. I do struggle with it here at times. Hmm. 
only problem with the pre-rendered backdrops is it doesn't allow you to adjust the camera on the fly which was something that was rectified with Code Veronica which is a very underrated Resident Evil game in my opinion I mean you have those folks who swear by it but in the common consensus you know folks talk about Resident Evil 2 they talk about remake Resident Evil 4 obviously but not Code Veronica and to me in terms of classic Resident Evil style survival horror it's definitely one of the top ones it just did everything right in my opinion though it could be tough as nails your first time playing if you don't know what to do if you don't have a guide or help yeah it can be kind of brutal but once you know what to do it's not that bad and there we have doom book 2 which was hiding the wolf metal and we have an eagle to go with it so i think we'll have an opportunity to use those very very soon so let's get on the move shall we and it's been pretty quiet around these parts lately no hunters no more spiders probably and definitely no zombies because at this point you know they're not even bothering they're like eh. hold on okay so this is what i was talking about earlier as far as going back to do something I wanted to pick up those magnum rounds remember that first boulder that came to get us and missed well those were hiding behind that so there you go and back through here nothing else in that room so and magnum rounds are few and far between so you really don't want to pass any of those up if it was anything else even shotgun shells I probably would have left it alone but no nah, we're definitely taking that and just had to do more item management there we're back and this area wasn't as bad as I thought it would be the hunters were kind of pushovers. The spider went down like a sack of bricks from 30 stories up, so this went a lot better than it could have. A lot better, actually, because that spider hurts. Just take my word for it. And it's welded. Okay, so we're not getting through that. So yeah, about Enrico, we have a betrayer in our midst, it looks like. Any ideas on who that could be? If you're watching this, you probably already know who it is, but just play along. Don't be like that. Suspense, you know, got to keep ourselves on the edge of the seat, you know. Sadly, there's only one first time with things in life, you know, talk about time machines. What if that was just something specifically to alter your memory so that you could experience anything that you've already experienced again as if it was the first time just to get that newness back because and I'm sure there are hidden dangers associated with that I'm not considering right now but I would definitely like to make use of that right now and experience this all over for the first time would definitely be jumping in my seat a lot more than I have been that's for sure <laughs> so anyway we just use the metals and Q Zelda treasure chest sound effects. We've unlocked something that hopefully will lead to something good, but probably not because nothing about this mansion is good. But we don't care because we're not scared. We're Chris Redfield and we know no fears. So we're gonna take this mystery magic elevator with the very interesting metal door there. Now where might this lead? I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> 